Okay. Um, it's going to be a bit naughty today, but um, quite surprising. Let's go into the psukim right away. I'm not going to ask a lot of questions. Let's save our time for answers. There's a very, very strange uh, occurrence in this parsha, the review of the parsha, Perikyu Dalit, is about a war. You know, these prehistoric uh, kings that they had, uh, if they had um, a kingdom of two miles by two miles, that was the end of the world. Because, you know, they, they had to go to it and... Uh, even in the in the 1500s, 1600s, you go to Poland, you see how many kingdoms, France, Europe, was full of kingdoms, one next to another, just to show you was nothing. So why is the Torah coming here and elaborating about a war, kings that didn't even mark the history? You tell me about Sicha and Enoig? Yeah, they're being repeated in the Torah because... It was above natural, you know, the, the nace to, to take them down. And they marked the time and they marked the world because of their height, because being the sons of um, angels, you know, and so forth. But I'm Raphael. Not only are you going to tell me his name, you're going to tell me the name of his city, where he's coming from. Are you adding me something with that? Do I really care about that? Honestly, this leaves me, you know, as almost, you know, it's a Torah becomes a, a, a storybook telling me who cares about this going? We say, you can't learn from the Maisim. So why is the Torah going to talk to me about a war? where everything is about the goyim and all the details of the details, where they run, how they died, how they fell in the other thing, and so forth. What was the terrain over there? You know, Emekasidim, and so forth. I'm not going to get till there, trust me. But um, it's definitely a very strong foundation if Shabbos Be'ez Hashem will be able to able to have a share, it's going to be a very strong foundation today's share. So, middle of nowhere, we have Avram Avinu. And Avram Avinu, he's going to go to war before even having the Brismila. So he's going to go to war almost as a goy. So how did he, how did he, deserve, did he deserve to have the miracle? It's a very interesting thing. And then the pastor keeps on to tell us to, to describe us the, you know, how Ram prepared himself to the war when 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 they captured Lloyd. Right away it says, by Yarek is Chanichov. Chanichov is the come word from comes from the word Chinuch, those he educated. Yelide Beisoy, born in his house. Why Eliezer was born in his house? No. Eliezer was a son of Pharaoh, according to the Midrash. So, so what is Yelide Basil? Shmoina Asa Ushloi Shmeris, 318. 318 what? Vayir Daif Adon. And, and, and he, he, the process was till, till the Don. Do we know where Don is? No. So what are you trying to tell me here? How, how, how did Avram engage in this war? Makes no sense. It's all words that you can translate one at a time, but into a sentence, it makes strictly no sense. I don't know how you want to translate this. If you want to go by Pshat, you know, he he fell upon them at, at night. But this is totally wrong. That's not what the Pasuk says. 
Vaicholik is from separation. They're separated. Alehem on them. Lila, the night, not at night. What do you mean he separated on them the night? Who Vavada? Him and his servants. So the Gemara in the Darim says, you know, and I'm sure it's because it's missing the word ish here, learns that Eliezer equals 318. So who went to war? Avraham and Eliezer. Eliezer was an Evet Knani. Why would he deserve such a miracle? And Avram is master. Even as before he got a bris milah, he was a tzaddik to a level that we cannot comprehend. Avram Avinu was up there, the whole world. Until the Geula, Avram is in charge. So Avram counts for one, but Eliezer, you know what? For him, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made all these miracles. Really? Doesn't sound right to me, this. Now, so he came, him and his servants, in plural. Vayakem. Now we go back to singular. Instead of saying, they hid them. No, it's singular. Vaychalek, singular. But we're talking who vavado. Really, uh, there's no point keeping on. There's, it makes every pasuk makes no sense grammatically. Now we're going to jump. We're going vayerdefem at choiva. Ah, but I thought it was a dun. And you know where is choiva, by the way, in case you don't know, but you know, you don't have your, your ways with you. Asher mismoile Damascus. It's left of Damascus. Because if, in case you thought to go right, no, 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 don't go right. It's left of Damascus. Really, are you coming to teach me something here? I mean, what are the details about? Why are they, we have never encountered Psukim, Tzitzagishir, that have so many grammatical problems. Now, okay, so we have here Huva Avadav, Avadav in plural. I know already that the Gemara in the Darim that wants to say it's only Avram and, and, and Eliezer that went to war. Does, it works in that Pasuk, but it doesn't work in the next Pasuk. And the last Pasuk of this Pasha, not the Pasha of uh, Lech Lecha, Perek Yudalit, it says, I mean, the end of the story of the word, of the war, Bil Adai, besides me, Rakasher Ochlu Hanearim, only what the, you know, when they wanted to give him part of the Shalal, he says, you know what, I'm not going to take nothing, just what the Nearim, already plural, Vechelek Anashim, and the part of the man, Asher Holchu Iti, that went with me, Aner Eshkoil Umamre. Now, here, three more names. So we already have Neorim, we have Anashim, plural, and we have three men. How can you tell me that Avram went only with Eliezer? And especially the way it seems to be touched that Eliezer is Gematria 318. In that case, it doesn't work for me because he should have said 319 in the past. Avram plus, plus Eliezer should be 319, not 318. Are you with me? Okay, so, so we see here, we have a war that Avram is going to undertake. He's going to have to fight. But whatever is described in the Passover is strange. The way it's described, it's strange. And the numbers don't work, neither. So what are we talking about here? All right, let's start rebuilding now the whole story of Avram. Then we're going to get into the Psukim, and you're going to see 
what's happening. And and maybe at the end I'll give a little a little bonus on that. But obviously, obviously, the Torah doesn't come to recount an occurrence, a fight between nations at that time. The Torah is coming to tell us something that La Netzach Netzachim forever valid, especially for Milchemes Goigu Margot. In other words, all the hints in this parsha, when I say again, parsha means this barrack, this war story, are pointing to details about the Milchama of Goigu Margot that's very likely is the one we're seeing starting right now. So it's good to hear well, understand, because everything we're going to say about explaining those pasuks, so psukim are going to be things that we're going to see ourselves and be prepared for it and know what to do. Because the last thing we want to have, if nobody knows when Mashiach comes and I don't come to pretend I know anything, I know nothing. And even less than anyone else. So, however, a person cannot be caught off guard. When we see occurrences like this in the world, we have to get ready. We don't want to come. Mashiach comes. Chazal tell us that when Mashiach will come, it's not that, you know, what we expect. The world is going to get ready. And all of a sudden, we're going to see a man coming from heaven. And and no, 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 no. When Mashiach will come, You'll get text. You know, Mashiach is here already? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mashiach is here. How did you hear that? I got a text. No, nah, not possible. We would have heard. You know, the world would have changed. No, that's how Mashiach will come. So we don't want to get caught off guard here and not be ready for, for Mashiach. We have to clean ourselves up and, and, and be ready because my personal belief is that's definitely a Mesugal Dika time, especially right now. And 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 that um, the whole Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the Geula from, from Mitzrayim will resemble the Geula of the end of days and not the opposite. Because the one we're going to leave is going to be much, much, much bigger. So we're going to see Makos, we're going to see the Choyshech, we're going to see everything they've seen, but in bigger. And when Moshe Rabbeinu came to, 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 to um, with the Hashem's message to the Zekenim, he told them the Loshen that Yaakov Avinu instructed that the Goyal will come with the Loshen. Pokoit Pokati. So Pakati equals 774, which is the year we are now in the fifth, in the, in the fifth southern. So uh, 84, sorry, it's 784, 784 is now. It's Mesugo. That's what I believe. And uh, but everyone is, is free to believe what they want, but I'm gonna prove it inside the Psukim. Let's go now. The Midrash is starting. By taking the pasuk by Yarek, the same pasuk by Yarek is Chanichav, so he prepared those. The very pasuk we had a problem with that uh, he, the, the the one that he taught Yelide Beisoy, the one that were you know born in his house, and the eight hundred, uh, the the three hundred and eighteen. Rishlakish says, "Do you know who's the three hundred and eighteen are?" He says it's Eliezer because the number is of Eliezer equals 380. But we have asked already on the, uh, the Pshad of the Gemara because the Gemara says the same thing in Edarim that 318 is the value of Eliezer. So I would like to propose that I'm not going to make you wait and uh, I'd rather get you 
onto the big thing. So I'm going to go right away, not as usual in the year, but uh, I'm going to go right away for some answers. And this is what I believe because we asked a very strong question. Abraham Avinu should deserve much more than Eliezer. So I went Avraham Avinu. You know what it's equal to? 317. 317 plus one Eliezer, what's the count? 318. Here you go. No more question on the Pasuk on this 318 here. And instead of being 319, and why would Eliezer's schus be bigger than Abraham's schus? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. But at least we answered that. Now you know the pshat in the pasuk, in the word, the side of this. Why it doesn't say ushlois me ois ish? Because there were not 318 people. They were 318 in terms of value. Why? Because wars, they're not launched in this world. The consequence of the, the, the world the, the war up there is what you see here. It's not with strength that you overpower your enemy. Not at all. What's the side of this pasuk? The side of this pasuk is every Uma, every nation has a malach on top. And when you see that they're going to they get ready for war down here, just understand that there's war up there. In other words, right now as we speak, there is a war between Michael and Rahav in Shomayim. There is no question about it. No question about it. The war started in Shomayim. The outcome of the war is what our eyes are going to see here. Look at these dorks. They bomb themselves. I mean, 25% of their rockets fall on them. Hey, come on. With all the time they have and all the engineers they have, do you know how simple it is to make a rocket? Whatever. If it's not in a Shomayim. So we know at this point, we say in the Tfilah, Baruch Ato Hashem, Magain Avraham, that you protected Avraham. And Magen is a shield. And Bahari Sayamin, we're going to start, we're going to have at the end of the day is that same shield. What is that shield? Take the letters. Magen. Mem, Michael. Gimel, Gabriel. Nun, Nuriel. It's not a war that's going to be down here. It's a war up there. But yes, these malachim are going to come down here and show us, you know, give us a little bit of a nechama consolation that we're going to see the, the nechama on our enemies that have spilled so much Jewish blood through the ages. So now we're going to raise a little bit the level because we understand that when Avram and Eliezer came to war, they didn't come as humans because the war is launched first up there. The outcome is what we see down here. So first you have to take down the angel of exactly as Yaakov did when he fought the angel of Esau. We have to fight the angel. And you have to know the main koyach against the Jews is Amalek. Wherever you take it, under any angle you take it, through this Pasha, you find Ramazim of Amalek and his Koyach. If I have time, I'll go, uh, I'll dig in a little bit more, but I just want to show you first the Pshat in the Psukim explaining Milchemes Goigu Magoig, because this is the sole logical explanation that the Torah would record a story like this. And it falls extremely well into the name of Hashem, the Yudke Vavke. Oh my gosh, how he falls in like exactly, so precisely, it's scary. So, but we do have a problem though, because it says in the next, next Pasuk, who Vavadav, him and his servants. 
So, but he didn't have only servants. So you see, even the second pasuk is a bit difficult because he had also Yili device. And he mentioned after that, Anoshim, Nearim, Anoshim, Aner Eshkolu Mamre. Aner Eshkolu Mamre were not his people. I mean, the Talmidim of Avram Avinu, but they're not his children. They were not born in his house and, and, and they were not his servants. So they don't fit into the word Eved. So who are? Who is this Psukim? What are they hinting about? What are they talking about? Uh, I don't know what direction to take here. To go the underground way. And make you explain this, explode the head, or try to first give you a story. And Baza Hashem, if we have time, you know, we could go a little bit deeper. Okay, as Hashem wants, let him guide my words in my mouth. The Zayra Kodesh explains, he asked a question we asked What is Vaichalek? Alehem Laila. He split the night on them. He says himself, he doesn't say Balaila in the night to, to insinuate that Avram Avinu went to fight at night. Where would he fight at night, Avram Avinu? Did he have a, a night vision? Had you seen places like this in the middle of the desert? We all know Yamamelach. How can you see at night? What, what kind of idea it is? Even soldiers at that time were not fighting at night. So why would you go fight at night? Says the Zayar HaKadosh. HaKadosh Bochu splitted every possible remnant, even though it's Midas Adin at night, but every possible remnant of Rachamim that could remain took it out and went with Din against them. And, and pursued them in the Choyshech. What do you mean you pursue them in the obscurity? But night is obscure. Night is obscurity. Here, whenever you encounter this word Choyshech in the Torah, never translated by night. Choyshech is a total different animal. Choyshech is the first letters Ches is Chamoyer, Shin is Shoyer. You know, Loisa Charoish Beshoyer Uva Chamor Yachdav. We have an Isur to um, do the, the, the fields with a Chamor and a Shor, because when you put them together, says the Zayar, the world gets destroyed. And the Chaf is for Caleb. When the Ches and the Shin got together, when Yishmael and Esau got together, they got a son. Who's that son? Because he wants Esau to take the daughter of Yishmael. Now, who is the son? Which is basically uh, the grandson, Amalek. Caleb always refers to the dog always refers to Amalek. Germans always had dogs. Always refers to Amalek. So he took them on their terrain and there he beat them. And you will see those powers of Choyshech, of the obscurity coming together as we see right now. Sin, which is China, is one of the children of Kush. Is part of the Hamar. And if you refer to this and put every country in these three baskets, you will understand the war that's right now taking place. But let's go first on the Psukim. I will, you know, being there, I will give you some some more insights on this. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu wanted, and at the same time, he took all the Rachamim and protected Dabra. Who came out at war? The one that we call the Lila. 
the night, the Shekhinah. I have a problem. The Shekhinah can only reside in a person that has a bris milah. Because when you remove the Ola, you're removing the power of the other side. Ola is all the power with the Satan, the Nachash, the, the Caleb, the Amalek. What did Amalek do when he came after the Jews? When they came out of Mitzrayim? What the first thing he did? There was a lot of Olas in the desert. He took them, he says, God, that's what you want, get your Olas. He is the Allah himself. So now you're telling me that Avram Avinu is not complete. And he will undertake that war and the Shekhinah cannot reside in him. How does this work? Because we have to understand for ourselves. We are not complete. We are far from being complete. We are far from being perfect. We are far from even coming close to anything. Uh, we don't comprehend what even had to even spell perfection. However, in a world where we have to, 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 to wage war every day with the other side, with the Sitra Akhra every day, well, with the little bit of koiches we have left, you know, we do what we can. But obviously, someone who stands his ground and fight for Hashem in a generation like this, it's much bigger than all those wars that the tzaddikim had before. They never were facing the challenges we are facing today. So on the different perspective, yes, we are perfect. Even in our imperfection, but if our heart is pure, and we do what we do in our voida. It's not a show. It's not because of others, but it's for Hashem. Then yes, we are perfect. A tremendous level of perfection. Even though we are dwarfs, but we are dwarfs that stands on the shoulders of giants. So we see even further. So now, Avram Avinu didn't have the Shechina. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to intervene to create something to come a different way. There are three people that through the Torah are called Na'ar, youngster. First is Chanoich in Pasha's Bereshis. It's Na'ar and Eved at the same time. Sorry. Chanoich in Pasha's Bereshis, that I told you last year his story, that he went up in Shemaim alive, came out a char uh, of fire to take him. He was such a big tzaddik that it took him to Shemaim. I can't go into his story right now. We, not, we won't have time to go into the psukim and understand Goy Gumar Goy. But uh, I said at length the story, someone who wants to read his story goes to Sefer HaYashar, and he has pages over pages over pages, it's a midrash, over pages of the story of Hanoi. He was called Nar, a young, and he was called Eved. And everything will fall back in place, but please try to remember because it's going to be very hard to re repeat everything. Says that Yaakovish, he came back in Gilgul. In Eliezer. So what became of Chanoich? Chanoich became the very Malach. That's the, the minister we call the interior minister in Shomayim. He's in charge of Oilam HaYetzira, Atzilus, Beria, Yetzira. Where everything happened, the Chet of Adam Arisha and the... the, 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 the the Nachash, and so forth. This, this is where the roots of everything are. He is in charge. Every tefillah we say, that's the Malach that comes down and bring it before Kodesh Bochu. 
That's the Malach when we blow the shofar, he comes down and take the tkiyas and bring them before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the Malach when we say the hundred brachas every day. He comes down and it is a Malach of fire. In the Midrash Ber Bereshit Rabbah, about when Moshe Rabbeinu went up in Shamayim, how scary he was. And there's a reason why did he become so holy on Chanukh. It's good I to read the, the story. Anyway, so, but... At that time, they were not doing bris milah. So he was incomplete. So he had to come back in Eliezer. And Eliezer get his bris milah by Avraham, which is the, the personification of chesed. He was doing chesed with everyone. And you had to get the bris milah from the hands of Avraham. If I have time, I'll explain the connection why. Um. So Eliezer is Chanoich. That's why it's called Eliezer Eved Abraham. And that's why it's called Nar. And the third one is Yosef. Yosef Atzadik. He's called Nar. Behu Nar has been a Bilha. And he's called Eved. Le Eved Nimka Yosef. That's why his brothers hated him and so forth. Who was he? A Gilgul of Chanoich and Eliezer. It's a great story, right? What's the point of this story? What's the point of this teaching from Darya Kodesh? When, when the Torah tells us the Nearim came, who are the Nearim? These are. Eliezer was down here. So we have three levels. Chanoich in Shomayim. You have Eliezer on this world. Yosef was not born. But his neshama had to come in order to learn how to undertake the last war when Mashiach ben Yosef will be responsible to fight army Luz Harasha. In other words, the same way Avram and Sarah went down to Mitzrayim because Sarah always had the Shekhinah with her. And Sarah had to teach the Shekhinah how to give the Acer Makos, how to give the Ten Makos. That's why Kodesh Baruch Hu made even that she was taken by, by Paroi. And ten times she told the Shekhinah how to hit and where to hit. And she told the Shekhinah Will come a day my children will come out of Mitzrayim. And they will need you. You will be the one responsible to do. To, to, your heart wants to do something. Can he do something? No. Your head wants to take revenge. Can you do something? No. But your hands? Yes. The Shechina is the hands. So we have three hands. Yadag Doila, as exactly as it says in Mitzrayim. We came out with Yad Hagedoila. Yada Chazaka, Yada Gdoila Chesed, Yada Chazaka Gvura, and Yad Rama Center. These three hands are the hands of the Shrim. Yad, 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 equal 42, the name of Membeis of Anna Bechoyev. Okay, that's what the Shrim uses when we explain the hands of the Shrim up there. It's it's basically the name by Anna Bechoyev. So the Shekhinah had to learn, and, the, and, and um, Sarah told her to do exactly the same thing as she taught her. And uh, this will free the Bnei Yisrael from its rhyme, even though Eved has never been able to run away. And even though the Shekhinah will be trapped with witchcraft of Paroi, this will free everyone. The Shekhinah believed, and that's exactly what she did, and we know the end. However, that's what the Shekhinah will do also in the last war. Because as we said before, there's no war that's being waged on this earth. It's not the bomb that win. It's not the infiltration that kill. It's not the, the murderers. Sure, they're in voice. But it, we live in a world into a world. There's another world up there that knows it. Those very people 
that was murdered to a point where our heart screams for revenge. Scream. You would go now ask them, do you regret the way you left this world? He would answer you. If he had to be redone, I would redo it. Why? Because this was obviously an Ishama that needed a special level of correction. That's why they all Kedoishim today. They have attained the level of correction. It's unbelievable. They're as pure as the purest angel comes. However, we don't know. We stay with our side. But there's a much bigger side than this. And this is going to happen. And I'm going to prove it to you. So we said that we had three the three Nearim came and that will re remove one of the questions we had on the puzzle. But let, let me give it to you here. So we have the first one we say Hanoech, who got into Eliezer, correct? Sorry. Who got into Yosef? Strange. Why would HaKadosh Baruch Hu give us a Gilgul like this and call them Nearim, the Nearim, which are the only one in the Torah call now? This equals to 558. Because their power is Nachash Kadmon. When the three are together, the three Nearim, this tells you that within these four, I mean, the, the war that was waged, it was just not a war for, as we, we see it on the outside, for territory, for money. No, 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 no. Avram is coming. Avram is a Gdusha in this world that removes power from the Nachash. As the Midrash says, the the... Why did they take Lloyd? This whole war was about uh, uh, capturing Lloyd. Why? Because if they catch Lloyd, let me go back a second. Let me tell you uh, a little bit more of history. First king mentioned is Amrafa. Zayar, Midrash, Ariya Kodesh, Amrafa, it's Nimrod. Ah, uh -huh, really? That very same guy that threw a rom in the furnace? Yeah, that's the one. But now you have to go into the Midrash to see what happened after the furnace. Nimrod was trying to find any possible way to kill Avram. Till the point where Terach said, you know, I'm going to lose my son. I'm not interested. He packed up and he left. He went to Chara. Haran, he felt all this, says, you know what? Haran is the Makim of Lavan, is where Lavan is going to be born. Haran is three times, it's 258, three times Eloikim. So it's a place of Dini. So he was not well suited for Abraham. That's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu comes and tells him, Lech Lecha, leave that place. Abraham says, no, I have my old father. I have to, to, to serve him. I have to watch over him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, said to Avram, I promise you I will watch over him. Then Avram was fine and he left with Sarah and, and, and the clip of Lloyd followed him nonstop. Why? Because as the Midrash says, Uben Mesek Beisi Abraham, no, he, all he wanted, he was saying all the time, when is he going to die, this old man, so I can, he doesn't have children, I will inherit him. That was the purpose, Lloyd followed Abraham. Until he couldn't take it of the Dush and the teachings of Abraham, he went where he belongs in story. This is Lloyd. Now, but Nimrod knew that his 
kingdom because he saw in the um, in the stars that the star of Avram will take his kingdom down. So he was hunting Avram and try to kill him. That's why he came with this idea. Let's catch Lot. And, and automatically Avram will come to free him and then we'll kill Avram. That was, that was the whole plan. So, but Avram was unprepared in terms of Gdusha because he didn't have the bris mila. And here we go now, we're going back to, so really Nimrod was impersonating the Nachash. Nimrod was in this world, the real Nachash. And the fight was survival because Nachash and Mashiach have the same value. 358, but only one at a time can be in this world. If Nachash is here, Mashiach is not. But if Mashiach is here, Nachash is dead. Now, I want to bring another proof to what we just said from the language of the Pasuk, from a language that was also kind of uh, difficult to understand, that we could not translate. Now, Vayarek es Chanichav, who are we talking about here? Now that we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent help from Shamayim to Avram. He sent him Chanoich, which is Malach Matat. I don't know if I say that. I'd say once, but uh, I call him Matat. Uh, Eliezer and Yosef. Now, if you take by Yerek as Chanichav, and these are the one that he had to Chanichav from Chinuch. So we, we translated at the beginning of the year in the past that he educated. No, that he will educate. Because Avram Avinu is teaching them the same Neari. All right, I'm going to go. Let me explain you what hides behind this word now. Now equals 320. This what we call the male dinim from the male side, there's 320 dinim, which is five times the word din. Equals 320. So we understand that when you're at war, automatically the kitru goes up, everything goes up. In Shamaim, they look at the person, is he deserveful of being saved? Is he not deserveful of being saved? And so forth. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to send, because Avram was incomplete, now you understand the power they had, each one, in order to be able to stop the dinim that would come his way. Because, don't get me wrong, these people there, these kings, they didn't fight only with the uh, conventional weapons. They, fight, they, they, fought, they fought with Kishos. And Avram needed protection. Now, if you take the very th three same actors, we're going to see exactly this in the words. These act, I mean, these three are going to be the same very three that are going to come What the time when Mashiach ben Yosef is going to face. Uh, what did I tell you? Um, okay, I will, I will say it in a minute. 
we so there are the Mida of Yesoi. Yosef, we know he kept the breeze. Eliezer, if you see the language, the parallels between the language in the Torah between Yosef and Eliezer, both of them have exactly the same sentence. Eli Avram said to Eliezer, Simna Yadcha Tachas Yerechi, put your hand on my hip, was on the breeze. Yosef told him also, Simna Yadcha Tachas Yerechi. Same exact language. So we see they're all one. So they were the one that could bring the Shekhinah because remember the hands only the Shekhinah. So if you bring me plus the Yichud of the He, because now you have Vav He, because the Yesoid is Vav, the Shekhinah is He, then you have exactly that the Chanicha are the very three. And, and I'm going to prove it three times. What is the name that is, that is in the Yesoid? The name Shaka equals 314 equals just to show you that all of them belong into that meat. Now, if we take 314 and we add him the letters, so everyone for, for, for him and for Yosef, because they all have, so we go by this name. So we have 317 plus, I don't write plus, plus 317. But Eliezer, because of his name, he's 380. This gives you a number, 952. This gives you a title in the puzzle. In other words, this whole puzzle, without the vowel, this whole puzzle, is about who came to help exactly as the first possible. In this world, Avram Avinu went only with Eliezer. However, he had help. He had help from the Malach, from Chanoich, and from Yosef Atzadi. What's the reason? We will see. Again, we will see. If you want it now, look, if you take 320, Time three, because there are three. The three call now. What it gives you? Oh, don't write. I say this. Equals 960. How many login in the mikveh? 360. Uh, 960. When it's going to be time to be metire earth, mikveh Israel Hashem, the mikveh is the three nar. That's the reason they were the actors then. They were in Mitzrayim and they will be in this world now here with us. And I can elaborate and give you a share just on this number here, how to prove it inside here and how the Shechina is going to use that name, that number in order to fight and how to fight. But we, we don't have time, uh, especially for this. So now we have Aner Eshkoil Mamre. So we're talking about different Midas. They came with different weapons, spiritual weapons, in order to fight these kings. So we have three levels, but at least, and it says, only thing, Avram demanded from, he didn't want to take anything from the king in terms of uh, the booty. He just wanted to say, let them take their share. Which share? How much is their share? What, what is their share? What, Otera, you gave me so many details till, till now. Now all of a sudden you don't give me any more details? 
What share? It's not a share at that time. It's a share to come. This equals to 347 equals to Amilus. The fight of the Mashiach ben Yosef and Armilus. And who's going to come to help him? Uh, as we say, Mage, Michael Gabriel, which also equals to the same number. It's going to be a sort of tremendously powerful. I suspect that this 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 one is from it could be China. I didn't look into the name, you know, I didn't make research in the name yet. It could be somehow in Iran, I don't know, but it's from the, the axis of evil for sure. And it's gonna be extreme, it, it's gonna to prove to, to be a tremendous challenger to, to Mashiach Ben Yosef. And only with Michal and Gabriel we will have the, the possibility to, to be uh... now let me explain I have a few more minutes, you know. Let me explain a subject a little bit going a little bit under. In the Galia Raza, the Talmud of Darya Kodesh, he gives us the name that Sarah used in order to teach the Shechina, this is what you do and this is how you eat. Because obviously everything is within the names of Hashem. As Dari goes at extreme length, which is not his usual, to explain where each king is and what's the middah in the Gdusha against it. To show the power of the four kings were tremendously powerful. And if I had to show you in simple, just a synopsis to give you an understanding and why we needed the Shechina because you remember if I would take it from here you would understand better in Oila Masiya you see my tatron here anyway this is the name we have look at the orange letters you have four Yud K Vav K how many Black letters there are. Five. What was the war here? Four against five. Four against the five. The five, even though they exactly equal. Yud, K, Vav, K, 26. Vav, Dalet is like a Yud. Hey, Vav, Hey, 26. It's a 26 on the outside, a 26 on the inside. However, the 26 on the outside takes four letters. The 26 of the inside takes five letters. Where is this name? In the Malchus. It's the last hair of the Yud Kevavke. That's the reason we needed the Shechina. Because we knew that's exactly this war will be the war of Milchemes Goygumagor. Now, if we take, I promise to prove it to you, I will. So Abraham at that time didn't have the Malchus. We are in this world to correct the Malchus and to bring it up to its place after the Yud, K, Vav, K. 
You remember the, 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 the Kavanas of the Lulav? We have three species together, Yud, Keva, the fourth species, which is the Esroig, which is the last A, which is the Malchus, is wandering by itself. But our work is to put them together. And if they didn't touch together, the person is not Yitzhak, the mitzvah of Lula. We've seen that, we spoke about this on Sufis, right? So we have a lack in this world of Nisro. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us everything, but the Malchus, we have to go work and get it. How do we work and get it? The Pasuk hinted it. Because you can ask yourself a question. Why was he, why was uh, Abram successful only with the number 318? There's a lot of soydas in this number, in this name, Eliezer. Beyond, my, my mouth is burning to tell you to try to drop bombs here, but I, I have to control. Uh, but why 318 and not 317? Because Vayarek is 316. And it's not enough. No, no, no. 316, not good. You had to add a few words and come to 300. And, and why not 319? It's a little bit stronger than three. No, it has to be. As we explained from before, we are not talking about really. This war is only an image about the work we have to do. And not only this, but also how to win the last war. We can only win it if we have at least 319 with us. This equals to 2,488. If I recall, I'm going to do it on our memory. Um, Torah, sorry. Torah, Tefillah. Say Darka, the sugar. Exactly. Twice, sorry, twice like this. Teret Fila, let me see. Uh, no, no, it's correct. I don't want to make a mistake. Let me tell you this. Confirm it. Um, Yeah, that's correct. Three lots, a dark and sugar. Correct. And this, we're getting the Malchus. But the Malchus can be acquired, the Mishnah say in Aves, with 30 miles. He has 30 levels. So you do the Torah, the first level. You have to get better. Second level. Third level. We have to get, like the word, ye. That's why it's not Kehye. Like in the in the in, in the Bina, it's Kehye. In here, it's the Yehye. Because it takes a lot of work. And whenever we think we have achieved, we have achieved nothing. It's still more thing. So we have these 30 are hinted in this name. If you take this and you add it to this. Put a comma for it. Equals 588. Uh, 588. Equals Milchemes Goy Boom Exactly. There's many, many formulas, you know. There's Many times in this parasha I found this, but let me give you, I, I wanted to give you one. Now, we saw here in the table that this is the Malach and this is the name in Oilam Ayetzira. Now, we're going to see who we are, the Bnei Yisrael, 
in order to understand what is our objective and what is our work. So I have this formula here. That's number one. Copy. I'm on a page. I think it's not a here. It has to be my. Maybe the 318, 318, and 156. It seems correct. Um, if you add exactly the name that's in Olam Hayetzira, where Hanach is, the, the, the Malach Matat, Hey. Hey. So equals 603. Equals. Bene Yisrael. Bene Yisrael is a composition of the mid of the Yesod, the mid, and acquiring the name of Akadosh Bochu that it's Oila Ma'itzira means is a tikkun. A person has to work. A person has to have in mind to be mesaken. Today, unfortunately, we, we, we dive and we don't even understand. When we say, someone knows we're in the Chochmah of the Tiferes. Someone knows that in, in, in Mechaya Mesim, we are in the Bina of the Tiferes. Now we go to Chayn and Adas, we go in the Chochmah of the Malchus. You know, and so forth and so forth, every Bracha. So the Shefa comes, you understand where it's coming from. So you have an understanding in Shemaim, what you have in front of you, what is happening and what will happen at the end of time? That when you put HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Shekhinah together, automatically the Bina comes out. The Nesher HaGogli, the big ego. And when the big ego spread its wings, we said it many times, according to the Zera, that all the clippers run in the seventh level of the Gehinam. They can't get any higher, otherwise they'll be burned from the Gdusha of the Shekhin. So we see, like when the Gemara said, Rabbi Yeshub and Levi, Astel Yohanavi, when is Mashiach come? He told him, ask him. He says, where is he? He says, he's by the gate of Yerushalayim. And you're going to see when he changes his bandages, he's not like everybody that, you know, all the leprous people that take them all off. And then, then we do them all. He takes one and replace it. Why he does this? Because in case Hashem calls him in between two bandages, he should be ready to come. So he went to Shah Yerushalayim and he saw, and he found him. He says, when is the uh, sir coming? Uh, to, to, he says, Hi, yon. He was very happy with Shem and Levi. But the next day, so he didn't come. So he went to Elianavi. So Elianavi told him with a jovial uh, face, No, what did he tell you? He says, He lied to me. He said, What? The, the Mashiach would lie to you? He said, Yes, he lied to me. He told me he would come yesterday. He didn't come. So he said, Tell me the word he told me. What, what did you ask him? What he answered? He says, when, when is Mar? Sir, when is he When are you coming? He says, Hayoim. He says, he didn't understand his answer. Hayoim. Im If he told you basically the first word of the apostle, today, it's up to you. It's up to us. The turn of events. What's going to happen to these soldiers? How many Chaz Sham will be wounded? How many Chaz Sham? Our schusim will protect them. When we say Anna Bechoyach to have a thought for them, when we do a mitzvah, a bracha, when especially when we say Amen, Amen is a malach, and you direct this malach, says, Look, I'm giving you instruction. I created you. This is the, these are the strongest malachim, the, 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 uh, the malachim from Amen. You say, you, I instruct you to go on the battlefield and protect me as many chayalim as you can. Protect me as many children inside the Eretz Yisrael who may get chaz v'sham, receive this bomb, who may get shocked, who may get fear. Protect them. Send. Amen. Amen. Go and say amen. This is how we wage war up there. But as we speak right now, there's a tremendous war, and it's only the beginning. 
the more I see that Frenchies, Frenchies, those who took chill, the only people that did like Hamas in the history of the world that took Jewish children, grabbed them from the arms of their mother, put them three days in the Paris velodrome without food, medicine, or, or, or toilets. And they were negotiating with Hitler to send trains. Hitler said, that far I can't go because the, the public opinion will go against me. I can't afford it. France has taken its own trains and sent those Jewish kids to Auschwitz. They want to join the coalition against Hamas. So we see right here the deck, you know, the, the chess board taking shape and seeing Esau is going to be on one side, Kush is going to be on the other side. Nimrod will be here. Amilus is his power. And, you know, you heard that China sent ships to the, to the Mediterranean Sea. And we know, we see from last week, Parasha, it's not, an, it's not a coincidence that Uvne Kham, Uvne Kush, Sini. So we know already where they belong, and each one is taking its final position before the last war. And um, the Torah took great extent and, and thing. To go into this psukim, obviously we don't have time to go each puzzle, but I wrote on every puzzle the meaning and how it goes and applies to the end of time. And we will see Bez Hashem on Shabbos have Rama Vinu turned everything and the names and went fighting with them.